everyone. I'm Grace Nolan. I'm so glad you could join me for my book launch. I've been waiting to share my book with you, 10 Naughty Numbats. It's one of three books in a series called One to Ten and Back Again. And it's all about helping children to learn to count to ten. Book two is Ten Bush Babies, which helps children to add up to ten. And book three is called Ten Lively Lorikeets, which helps children to learn to subtract from 10, just in a really simple and subtle way. And it's, they're all of them, this book and the others, are full of native Australian animals and plants, which I love. And that's why they've been endorsed by Australian Geographic. That magpie comes into book three eventually. And I really love the fact that children can learn uh, the basics of counting, and also at the same time, learn to name and recognise 30 different Australian native animals. The way to find out more about the books is to go to my website, gracenolanauthor.com, and that way you can find out about the other two books as well. But today I'm going to be telling you about this book here, the first book. And I'm going to get my husband John to come and join me, uh, and that way he can say a few things that uh, I won't be saying it, perhaps. <laughs> Hi John. Hi everyone. Good to be here. I thought I was being invited to a lunch. <laughs> it's a launch. It's a John. launch, yeah, you know, so I've got to work. Okay. Fine. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, how are you feeling about having your book launched at the moment? Is it oh, good? pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> Was that the hard question you no, were going to ask no, me? No, no, no. That, that's the easy question, just oh. to ease you into it. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to say something about your inspiration for these books? Oh, well, that's good. That's a good question, and that's easy for me. The simplest way I can answer that is nature is my big inspiration. I love being surrounded by nature. I love all animals and plants and particularly Australian native animals and plants. So that's why my books are full of that. that. And um, that's part of what makes the books really beautiful. The other inspiration is that um, I've been a teacher for over 30 years, as we both have, mm, yeah. and too often I've seen children of all ages struggling with really basic numeracy and literacy and I really wanted to do something about that to help them and it's usually it's just something they might have missed out on or not be ready for and it didn't give them something to build on and I feel if they're given something really uh, good to build on, something that they understand, then it takes them further on to enjoy learning more things and understanding more difficult concepts. So that's been part of my inspiration for this series as well. It's certainly a very attractive book. I mean, bright yes. covers and the, oh, the glossy paper inside. I think kids yes. will love going back to it and rereading it. But yes. are there other ways it's been designed specifically for learning? Yes, yes, that's a good question, John, because uh, something I'm really keen about is that it, books should be entertaining and enjoyable, especially for children, but for all of us. But if you want it to be used as a learning and teaching aid, it needs to have certain elements in it. Well, it's better if it has certain elements. And one of those things is repetition, because it needs to be repeated over and over, but in different interesting ways so that children can learn and remember. Uh, for example, um, I don't know, it could open up to any page, I suppose, but this, let's say this one. It shows the number five, the word five. It's got five dingoes that you can count. It's got five gum leaves in the corner that you can count. So it's showing the number in many different ways. And uh, that way it's reinforcing that number for a child. I'll just try and get that page that's your favourite, John. <laughs> for example, here you've got number eight, the word eight. You've got eight swans to count. The, the eight leaves up in the corner again. You've got five crowns. No, eight crowns. I, think. I mean eight, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I need to learn it. <laughs> Go on, John. Eight crowns, eight beaks. And... Eight lifesavers. Eight lifesavers as well. Good. Yes. So um, that sort of repetition. And the other important thing is predictability. 
which is really important and children love so that they can join in and try to guess what comes next and that way they can really be part of it and engage in it. And that's part of this book as well. Another thing that I was really keen about was to have clear text and uncluttered pages. I think that's really important to help children to learn and remember. And again, on any page, just clear font on a fairly simple background so that you can see the text really easily and children can eventually join in and, and actually start to recognise the words as well. I think the structure of the sentence is good too because it remains the same throughout with uh, the number, then an adjective followed by the name of the animal that's, that's in the right. picture. Good. Yeah. Yes, and what I wanted to say is a sort of a fairly plain text mm. as the background. Um, so we've got sort of showing the number in a lot of different ways. The other thing that's really important to me is a rhyming text for this sort of thing. So that you've got rhyme, rhythm and alliteration, which I absolutely love. And it's a way that really helps children to learn and remember. It's the way that um, we all, let's say, going back through the ages, learned to read and write before people could read and write. It's the way that they pass things down through the generations, through rhyme mainly, because it's interesting to listen to, it's easy to remember, and that's the way it is for children who don't know how to read and write yet. Mm -hmm. So it's a way for them to be able to join in with the text and repeat it, remember it, and it's, it's nice to listen to. I like the double page format as well. Oh yes, well that was something I was very keen on having, and that was the landscape format, which gives plenty of space for movement, across the page and to be able to stay on that same number right across for the two pages so that you can show it in a lot of different ways and it keeps reinforcing that concept, that number. So there's lots of learning going on on every page. Yes. Uh, are there teacher's notes for this? Oh, help? that's a good question, John. Yes, there are plenty of teacher's notes. All you have to do is go to my website and there are teacher's notes for each individual book which include a couple of worksheets so children can colour in and, and just enjoy being part of it, uh, the learning of the numbers. So that might be useful for parents too if they're reading the book to their children. Yes. And what about these other two books you mentioned? When are they due for release? They're both due on the same date, the 7th of April, coming up. So yes. I'm coming for lunch on the 7th of April. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a lunch that day. <laughs> Maybe I don't I'll get know. a lunch that day. <laughs> we'll okay. see. All right. So <laughs> perhaps. Um, we, we need to tell people where they can buy this book. Well, that's a good idea, John. Okay, yes. Okay, so we'll just quickly go through the best places to buy the books. And the first one, of course, is the webpage, gracenolanauthor.com. There's a buy button up in the top right-hand corner, and you can uh, buy the book through there. Or you can go to some of the big online retailers like Booktopia, Amazon, of course, and Dimix. Other big bookstores that you find in shopping centres like QBD Books, Readings have it available, also Angus and Robertson. In fact, just go to your local bookstore and ask them if they could get it in for you if they don't have it, or ask at your local library so they can buy it and put it on the shelf so everybody gets to enjoy it. Yes, I'm sure if, if you went and asked at any bookstore or library, they would get it in for you and it wouldn't be any problem at all. Now, I heard a rumour about a free book. Is this oh, that's free? right. I'm glad you the job to remind me of these things. <laughs> I'm going to be giving away one free signed copy at the end of this um, book launch. So if you want to be in that draw, all you have to do is um, put a like on the Facebook or something like that. Something nice, that is. <laughs> Definitely a lot. <laughs> okay. Oh, one so. thing I didn't mention was yeah. that um, the activities pages at the end also are in rhyme, so that it's part of the whole text, so that it's easy for children to listen to and enjoy. So it's this sort of thing. Yes, yeah, so it's just a, a nice sort of rhyming thing, so that it's like a song that runs through the whole book. So you include that in the reading? Yes, I will. I will at the end, which, which is now. <laughs> I think I might read the book right now. I'll leave you to that. Thanks, John. I'll come back into the centre. Ten North.
40 numbats. And every single page, as you'll see, is absolutely beautiful. One playful platypus swimming in a stream. Two cute koalas having happy dreams. Three bouncy kangaroos hopping up and down. Four wobbly wombats digging in the ground. Five daring dingo pups wrestling with each other. Six blue kingfishers, see what they discover. Seven perky possums playing in a tree. Eight graceful black swans gliding on the sea. Nine shy echidnas, look what they have found. Ten naughty numbats racing round and round. And that's the end of the text, or the main text. And now for the fun learning activities. Count to ten, then try again. Ten happy best friends, see them having fun. Can you count them up to ten? Begin at number one. Ten hungry best friends gathered here again. Can you count them in a line from one right up to ten? Ten cheeky best friends are playing hide and seek. Can you find each one of them starting from the creek? Now that you can count to ten, what do you see? Count the naughty numbats beneath the gum tree. And that's the end. But it's not really the end. I think it's the beginning because there are so many different ways of using this book to help children to learn and to enjoy learning, which is really what I'm uh, interested in and keen about. So I really want to say thank you to all my family and friends for supporting me right throughout this. Thank you so much and to all my Facebook friends too. I really appreciate it all. And I want to say a really big thank you to Nancy Bevington who's made this book so beautiful with her gorgeous illustrations. I mean, I can open absolutely any page. I love all of the pages and it's just... Every single one is just so beautiful and there's so much to see really. And for example, here you've got the six fish to count and all sorts of lovely things that are here and that Nancy has used to put in her sense of humour as well and I absolutely love it all. So thank you Nancy for that. And I want to thank Big Sky Publishing for everything that they've done to make this happen so that I have the book right here in my hand instead of just something that's written on paper uh, that no one else gets to see. So thank you very much, Big Sky, and all the team there, especially to Alison Marlowe Patterson, uh, who's an author in her own right. I've been in touch with her nearly every day for a whole year. She's absolutely wonderful. And the whole team at Big Sky Publishing, thank you very much for everything. They're a fantastic team. So thank you all for that. And I just want to say, please buy the book and read it and enjoy it. And I hope that you enjoy it as much as I've loved writing it and showing you and just being part of it all with you. So thank you very much, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again in April for books two and three. And I hope in the meantime that you'll get this book and share it with kids, share it with each other and just enjoy it. 
Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.